After another short delay, the long-awaited SDXL version 1.0 has been officially released, and it makes the original Stable Fusion 1.5 checkpoint look like a joke in terms of output quality. However, Stable Fusion 1.5 came out over 9 months ago, and the community has refined and polished this diamond in the rough into innumerable high-performing checkpoints like Dream Shaper and Epic Realism. While I have full confidence that one day, SDXL will far surpass even the top-tier Stable Diffusion 1.5 checkpoints, let's see how things stack up right now at the release of SDXL 1.0. First, let's take a quick look at these models on paper. As a warning, this is the nerdy part, or rather, the nerdiest part of this video, and if you're only interested in more concrete details, skip ahead with the bookmarks in the video description. The single defining stat for AI models is the number of parameters that they have. On that front, Stable Diffusion 1.5 has 860 million parameters, and Stable Diffusion 2 has only slightly more, at 865 million. In comparison, SDXL has 2.6 billion parameters, which is more than three times as many. This is slightly less than DALI 2, which has 3.5 billion parameters, and Imogen, which has 4.6 billion parameters. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any figures on midjourney to see how it stacks up. One thing people often forget is that diffusion models are composed of several neural networks, and the most important other one for stable diffusion is the text encoder. For stable diffusion 1.5, the text encoder was a frozen version of clip vit l14, which has 123 million parameters. This version is directly from the so called open AI and was not trained on a publicly available dataset. This model apparently has an accuracy of 75.5%. In one of my previous videos, I tried to determine how much Stable Diffusion 1.5 could handle in a single prompt, and the results were shockingly low. And this is probably the reason why. The tragic miscarriage, also known as Stable Diffusion 2, used OpenClip vit h14, which was trained on Lion 2b and has 354 million parameters, almost three times as many. SDXL actually uses two different text encoders, which are OpenClip vitg and Clip vitl. OpenClip vitg has 695 million parameters, which is almost twice as many as Stable Diffusion 2, and almost six times as many as Stable Diffusion 1.5. Per the OpenClip GitHub, this model has an accuracy of over 80%, which is the highest among those trained on publicly available datasets. On the other hand, vitl is the exact same encoder that was used for Stable Diffusion 1.5. Looking at the SDXL paper, it sounds like they run the prompt through both clips, then combine them. I'm not clear as to why this was done. Maybe using a smaller model helps start generation, or maybe vitl has some secret sauce that isn't in the open clip model. I don't want to speculate too much, so I'll just leave it at that. Interestingly, it is possible to send a different prompt to each encoder, so maybe we'll see some new prompting techniques in the coming weeks. Finally, Let's compare the pipeline for Stable Fusion 1.5 to SDXL. For Stable Fusion 1.5, it's pretty straightforward. The prompt is encoded with the clip vitl encoder, which is then used to generate a 64x64 latent. After generation, that latent is scaled up to full size with the VAE decoder. On the other hand, SDXL actually consists of two different models, the base and the refiner, which can be used alone or separately. The refiner model is only meant to be used for image-to-image -image and is specifically trained to deal with high-resolution images. First, the prompt is encoded with both OpenClip vitg and clip vitl, then combined together and finally fed to the base model to create a 128 by 128 latent. From here, the latent can be either scaled to the final resolution with a VAE decoder or it can be sent to the refiner model for additional work. The refiner model uses the same prompt However, only the OpenClip vitg encoder is used for the refiner model. And that wraps up the nerdy stuff. So, let's move on to compare some more tangible aspects. First, let's talk about the file size of the model. Base Stable Diffusion 1.5 is 4 gigabytes, with pruned versions of custom checkpoints taking up as little as 2 gigabytes. Even so, with the sheer amount of wonderful custom checkpoints out there, you could easily have over 100 gigabytes of models on your hard drive. I know I do. But if you think your hard drive is hurting now, you ain't seen nothing yet. Between the SDXL 1.0 base model and refiner, 
you will need a whopping 12.1 gigabytes of hard drive space. While this is definitely a drawback, this is the price we have to pay for tripling the number of parameters in the model. So, not exactly a win for SDXL, but hey, hard drive space is pretty cheap. Let's move on to the maximum size of generated images. As many of you are acutely aware, image size is bottlenecked by our lowly consumer-grade hardware, specifically VRAM. The large consumer GPUs have 24GB of VRAM, though, if you want to drop 4K, you can get a workstation GPU with 48GB of VRAM. As a quick disclaimer, this testing was performed in Comfy UI. However, when I tried to duplicate this testing in Automatic 11.11, SDXL started getting out-of-memory errors at much lower resolutions. So, I think Automatic 11.11 needs some optimization for memory. With my 3090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, I was able to generate images as large as 5.3 megapixels with Stable Diffusion 1.5, which is roughly equivalent to the sizes shown below. However, with SDXL, I was able to generate images as large as 7.9 megapixels, which is almost 50% larger. Even then, though I got an error message stating that there wasn't enough memory, the generation was still able to complete by using Todd VAE, which was not the case when I ran out of memory for Stable Diffusion 1.5. If we count the 10.2 megapixel image that completed with Tiled VAE, that's a whopping 92% increase. Overall, this is an absolutely massive win for SDXL since VRAM is currently the main hardware bottleneck for Stable Diffusion. There is a downside though. SDXL currently requires at least 8GB of VRAM to run, which is twice as much as Stable Diffusion 1.5. However, keep in mind that when it was first released, Stable Diffusion 1 required 10GB of VRAM, which is more than the 8GB that SDXL requires now. Hopefully, the trend of decreasing requirements will continue, and those with 4GB graphics cards will be able to enjoy SDXL in the coming months. Next up is generation speed. We're all familiar with the pain of trying to tweak our settings on a big image than having to wait for our pitiful GPU to plod through each iteration. So let's look at Stable Diffusion 1.5 generation times to get a baseline. As you can see, at low resolutions, generation time starts at around 12 seconds per megapixel. However, near the maximum resolution my GPU is capable of, this skyrockets to 50 seconds per megapixel for Automatic 11.11 and almost 150 seconds per megapixel for Comfy UI. This means that as image size increases, performance gets worse and worse beyond what we would expect based on the number of pixels. Now let's look at results for SDXL. Between Automatic 11.11 and Comfy UI, things are pretty close, but Comfy UI is just a little bit slower. If we convert this into time per megapixel, things get more interesting. SDXL has the shortest generation time for 1024 by 1024 images for both Comfy and Automatic 11.11. So, at both higher and lower resolutions, SDXL loses efficiency. Now let's compare SDXL to Stable Diffusion 1.5. For Comfy UI, Stable Diffusion 1.5 is actually 50% faster than SDXL at 512 by 512. However, at its native resolution of 1024 by 1024, SDXL is already 30% faster, and that lead only widens at higher and higher resolutions. However, for Automatic 11.11, things are much more competitive. SDXL is once again slower at lower resolutions, lagging SD 1.5 by 35%. Performance is pretty much equal at resolutions around 1200 by 1200. Then, SDXL takes a firm lead of around 30%, at resolutions above 1500 by 1500. Overall, I would call this a draw because both models have better performance under particular circumstances. Over the last couple weeks, I've seen lots of comments about how fast SDXL was. Though, based on my testing and results, this is likely due to Comfy UI being used instead of Automatic 11.11. Now that we've covered the benchmarks, let's talk about the more qualitative aspects of the models. Let's start out with a big one. One of the biggest struggles in the AI art community, and, to be fair, the non-AI art community, is making anatomically correct hands. The base SD 1.5 checkpoint was truly abysmal with hands. Since then, the quality of hands has improved dramatically, though it looks like we hit a cap of the SD 1.5 capabilities around April. As you may know, 
I did a series where I tested 46 models and 14 embeddings for hand quality. Here are the top scores I got with and without the use of embeddings. So let's see how SDXL stacks up with hands. I tested both the unofficial SDXL 0.9 and the official SDXL 1.0. The results are much better than results for base stable diffusion 1.5, with a score of 0.41 versus only 0.22. However, SDXL scores well below the average of the 46 stable diffusion 1.5 models I tested. That said, there are several recent stable diffusion 1.5 models with hands just as bad, so that only places SDXL near the bottom, not completely out of the fight. After very weak results from SDXL 0.9, I was concerned that we would essentially be going back to square one, but I was pleasantly surprised by the results from the official release. Anyway, I have to give this one to Stable Diffusion 1.5 because, at least for now, you can get much better hands out of that version. For our next test, while it is tempting to crank up your resolution during generation, doing this will usually result in twins appearing or the subject losing cohesion. Stable Diffusion 1.5 was originally designed to generate images at 512 by 512 and you could usually push this to 768 in a single dimension. However, custom checkpoints were trained at higher resolutions which in turn expanded these capabilities. Here are some charts showing how much twinning occurred for base Stable Diffusion 1.5 and three popular checkpoints at various resolutions. It varies a bit between checkpoints, but compared to base Stable Diffusion 1.5, the three checkpoints are leaps and bounds ahead, especially for portrait orientation. Now let's add the results for SDXL 0.9 and 1.0. For both portrait and landscape orientations, SDXL performs comparably, or better to, recent 1.5 checkpoints. So, at the very least, we aren't losing ground with this area to SDXL. But, all the results below are within SDXL's intended resolution of 1024 by 1024. So, let's see how it performs at even higher resolutions. Much like generation speed, SDXL seems to perform best around its target resolution of 1024 pixels. Both higher and lower than that, and the amount of twinning increases. Also, one thing I noticed was that instead of twinning, sometimes SDXL stretches and distorts the image at higher resolutions. Sometimes this is very noticeable, but other times it's subtle. But it is something you'll need to develop an eye for. Overall, SDXL has a higher maximum resolution and performs comparably at lower resolutions, which makes it another win over current SD 1.5 checkpoints. Another downside is the style of SDXL, or rather, a lack thereof. For Stable Diffusion 1.5, Style is now mostly defined by the particular model you use instead of your prompt. Like Stable Diffusion 1.5, SDXL is a general model that wasn't trained on a particular style. Back in the early days of Stable Diffusion 1.5, you had reference artists and styles to get a particular style in your output. The same will apply to SDXL until user-created checkpoints appear. So, our old friend Greg Rutowski might be making a comeback. The good news is that even for SD 1.5, anything version 3, which was the first really good checkpoint I know of, came out less than a month later, so we shouldn't be waiting too long. If you've checked out Civit AI, even during the couple weeks since SDXL got leaked, a couple of checkpoints have appeared. I even noticed last night that DreamShaper released an alpha version the same day as model release. Your mileage may vary, but I think the DreamShaper one already offers some substantial improvements over the base model. And that brings me to my final point. Our community is much larger and more experienced with training models than when SD 1.5 was released. I am confident that SDXL models will surpass Stable Diffusion 1.5 models within three months. Before my final thoughts, please like and subscribe to support the channel. My goal is to bring the best possible educational content to the Stable Diffusion community and your support helps keep making that happen. I have also decided to create a Patreon which will get you ad-free access to these videos or recognition in the outro. Since these videos are super niche, I never expect to earn even minimum wage for making them, so every bit of support helps. Anyway, while SDXL is currently lacking the wide range of high-performance fine-tuned checkpoints available for SD 1.5, the architecture is vastly superior, giving more efficient use of VRAM, the ability to generate larger images without high-res fix, and faster generation for larger images. For the first time since ControlNet, I am on this hype train and going full steam ahead. If you didn't believe the SDXL hype before, I hope this video gave you many compelling reasons to take it seriously. As always, thank you for watching, and see you next time.